You're now listening to Sound Talent Media. Check out more shows at SoundTalentMedia.com. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Matt Migaki, the vocalist of Cryptopsy and the host of the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast, where I sit down with fellow metal musicians. We talk all about their lives and music while sharing killer craft beers. If you've ever wanted to sneak backstage and share a beer with one of your favorite musicians, well, Vox and Hops is the podcast for you. This week on the podcast, I dropped a killer episode with Kelly Schaefer of Atheist. There is this episode and over 440 other ones to help you enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. So what are you waiting for? It's time to become a Vox and Hops head. Cheers. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode. I'm super stoked to bring you this one. I really, really, truly am. Today, I am sitting down, and I can't believe it. I can't believe this actually happened. I am sitting down with Mr. Kyle Gass from Tenacious D, Kyle Gass Band. You know the man, the myth, the legend. I was super, super stoked to get to do this, and we had ourselves a really, really great time. We just talked about music in general, some of his favorite guitar players, etc. This was a great episode, so I will let it speak for itself. But real quick, before we get into this episode, I do want to tell you about something pretty cool. I've got another single out. Well, technically, if you're listening to this on the day it comes out, it comes out tomorrow on July 20th, wherever you stream your music. The song is called Microcosm, and I built it, you guessed it, mostly around the hologram effects Microcosm, which is a fantastic and insane pedal. It's one of my very, very, very favorite pedals. It's very deep. It can do a lot of things and inspired me to make this song, and I even got inspired to do a little singing on this one. So if you'd like to check that out, it will be streaming along with all my other music under the name American Cyclops, and you can find that wherever you stream music and it'll be up on Bandcamp if you want to support there and all that stuff as well. I've got a lot, a lot, a lot in the works with that project, some really interesting things and uh, I'm having a lot of fun just creating music again. So hopefully you all are enjoying it and yeah, good times. All right, let's get off of this part so we can get on to the fun part where I talk to Mr. Kyle Gass. Here we go. Welcome to the show. Uh, I call this the Tone Mob Podcast, the show about guitar stuff occasionally, sometimes. That's basically what it is. But so. it used to be all guitar, is what you're saying. It kind of was for like five minutes. And then... Uh, you're saying, is this your deal? Is this your whole... Are you this, mom this and my, pop? This is my whole thing. Yep. This is your life. This is your world. Tone this is mob. what I do. And yep. you said, wait a minute. I think my entry point is guitars. But really, I want to be... Uh, I want to be Joe Rogan. I want to be Bill... Yeah, Bill exactly. Mar. I want to do the whole thing, right? Another guy. God, where are you located? I'm in Portland, Oregon. Oh my gosh, fantastic. Yeah, so, you know. You're right up the street. Yep, we're close. We're close by. We love, we love Portland. You've been here much? Oh gosh, yes. Yes. But it makes me sad that you don't know that I've been there, since that means I haven't been there in a long enough time. But yeah, we always go through there on... Uh, Tours, of course. Of course. Of course. You know, yep. where, are you gonna, where else are you going to play? Well, you know, I was talking about this the other day because I'm a big fan of the band Rancid. And they have mm. like a mm-hmm. vendetta against Portland, seemingly, because they haven't came here since 2003. So I don't know what the deal is, but every time I see a tour, I get all excited. I'm like, where's the Portland date? So, wow. So yeah. they have it in. They yeah. have it in for you guys. I don't know what the deal is. I can't but. imagine why. <laughs> Such wow. a lovely little burg in the beautiful northwest. Where are you originally from? Bastion, just down the street, down in uh, the Bay Area. Okay, all right. We're part of the West Coast elite. That's... I can't. Uh, <laughs> I can't go in <laughs> inland. Yeah, it's in very flyover. Elite. What am I going to do there? Yeah, no kidding, man. Well, what have you? Uh, what have you been up to? Uh, obviously, you you decided to release a single here recently, and that's probably why your people hit I did. me up. That was oh, I see. yeah. Oh, that must be what we're promoting. Yes. Yeah. You're not anti-vax, are you? You're in Portland. You're I'm. In, I know. No. No. I understand that this is a thing that we do. You know, I get it. <laughs> Listen, I'm not, not going to run around trying to inject people. That's right. Or put the tracking devices in. Although I think they might have snuck one in for me. Did you see that the tracking device was a, this was a thing going around the guitar community, that the tracking device is a, 
a boss metal zone. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody put out a fake schematic. I think some Italians and they, oh, uh, man. and it, and it went around to the anti-vax, like hardcore people. Oh, and then man, people were like, special. newsflash. That's a, that's a metal that's zone schematic. Yeah. Are you supposed to get in the, are you supposed to get in the mud and wrestle with those guys? Or are you supposed to rise above it? I, I, I tend to just, just so much acrimony. I mean, I mean, I'm just sort of, here's, I think might work. If we all work together as a team, mm -hmm. we don't have, you don't have to do it. I get it. And if you have some issues, all right. Yeah. But I think, uh, I don't know. The science is the science uh, seems really solid on it. I, I so, feel like yeah. there's, there's exceptions and those are the exceptions sure. and, uh, that's fine. And other than yeah. that, we just kind of got to try to take care of each other. That's and that's why I wrote the vaccinated song, uh, to the Ramones, I want to be sedated. <laughs> it just, you know, I thought I was really being original. And then after I finished it, I just typed in the YouTubes. Or no, someone tipped me off that there was a vaccinated song based on the Ramones song. I mm -hmm. thought, oh, wow, what a coincidence. Not. And then there was like 10 of them. <laughs> I thought, I'd, and there was 10 different. I thought, wow, I am the most unoriginal person going today that's just uh, that's terrible but it could, it could had, had i seen those i would not have uh, done it but i'm glad i did i thought it was a lot of fun and hey if you hadn't have done it then we wouldn't be doing this and this is just like the highlight of my whole everything get out of here who's uh yeah i gotta be one of your your best guests this week a hundred percent you are easily my best guest this week ah uh, tone mob yeah, how long great. you been doing this since 2015 yeah oh my god you no wonder you don't want to talk about guitars anymore <laughs> i love guitars i love them passionately uh but i am so immersed in it that you know that we tend it's to talk much. about aliens yeah. on this show quite or uh yeah you know pizza you know, you, mean? you know we are when you're uh when you're touring around and someone comes at, up to you after the show and asks about uh equipment it's always like the last thing you want to talk about Right. What what pickups are you using? I don't know. You know, I really don't know. But I do want to get a drink right now. <laughs> point me to the bar. We can talk about right. string pressure. I don't know. <laughs> so do you get the chance, like, in just in general, outside of the drunk guy after the show, do you get the chance mm. to talk about gear? Do you Are you super interested in any particular no. aspect of it? No. <laughs> you just play you just do the thing well i'm not even i'm not like celebrating my lack of but um i just in fact now i'm at a place where i i scarcely think the guitar matters i think it's all just vibe and and uh you know trying to express something mm -hmm. the guitar is almost I, I think they're just tools now that being said i love guitars too and i have a bazillion of them and i bought them and I'll just see one and impulsively buy it if I, mm -hmm. if I can. And, and, uh, no, they're, uh, they're, uh, yeah, they're, they're poetry for sure. But that being said, I don't get, I'm not like a collector or anything. I think yeah. guitar should be played and, but yeah, I don't, yeah, not, not too much. We used to do a show called Guitarings way back when. Yeah. And it, it was uh, ahead of its time, but we started talking about pedals and gear and then I was like, oh no, I can't. I don't know anything about it anyway. <laughs> this fuzz tone has a real roundness to it and a real good fuzz. <laughs> yeah. No, I've, I've always played acoustic almost because of that, because uh, electronics and stuff. I'm like, I, I don't know. When you when you throw yourself into the, into the tone mob, as it were, mm -hmm. then you're just going up against some, some people that spend their life pursuing tone. And I mean, I think a lot of it is... You know, musicality, I think, is a little more important than technique, I believe, and equipment. I mean, I just, uh, the gear was the entry point for me. For some reason, in around that 2015 time, I was like highly, highly into it. And I still am. I still really love the stuff. But now it's kind of become, I view, I, I'm view it more of a. Hey, you grossed up, Blake. Hey, we oh. all grossed up. <laughs> kind of. You evolved. Okay. You changed. I, I changed, but Your I will say, like, I I do use pedals. Like I make really weird music, and I use pedals like an extension of the guitar. And I'm like, sure. got them up on a table, and I'm tweet, you know, tweedling knobs, and yeah. using them almost like a synth. 
you know? So Yeah. That's a and that's the whole thing, which is I mean, it's all legit. It's all legit if you're going for uh something you're hearing or some sound. But I do also I do like the uh the Tom Morello sort of oh, like, yeah. I found a tone and a guitar and an amp and I set it up. And then I don't, I don't want to think about that. I mean, that's an extreme example, which right. I don't know if I subscribe to, but the concept I thought is so good. It's like, yeah, I'm thinking about kind of, I think about going electric in my old age here. Mm. Just, uh, and so I think I'm going to enter that world and just have my friends who are very good at the, that sort of thing, maybe help me out and then I won't be scared. Well, you hit me up. Anytime. All right. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. The it door is like wide you know. open. And I and I know lots of people who would be down to down to clown, as it were. Wow. That's great. Yeah. I need it. I like I play for fun at home and, and I you know, just uh, crank up some simple effects and I'm always like, Whoa, that's the cool look at that phaser. <laughs> I sound like you know, I mean I'm so easily impressed. But right? I'm almost like I I I, uh, too, I just fall into like that's oh my god, reverb and tremolo. This is the greatest thing. <laughs> yes, I sound like the safaris. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm actually, yeah, endlessly fascinated with the guitar. Just, uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just an amazing kind of, uh, you never, you never learn it all. You never, it's always something, something new. Do you have any? guitar heroes or musical heroes in general like who who of inspires course. you yeah well uh early on uh uh ted green uh, uh a very eccentric uh, jazz guitar uh, uh just uh one of the great chordal jazz guitarists and he wrote books mm -hmm. and i suggest anyone <laughs> who likes harmony to check it out because he was uh uh he, I think, I mean, he's a savant. I mean, he was just in another world. And he was a very eccentric. He lived in a small apartment in the valley and taught students for just, for no money, really. Just, he wasn't even, a, he was one of these guys that was just, uh, had the calling to teach and educate and never, he only put out one album. And uh, yeah, fascinating guy. So he was kind of a hero just for, for that. But um you know, I like a lot of the uh, the old giants. I like your, uh, you know, your Stevie Ray Vaughan's and your. A lot of people don't. Are, a lot of people are on this. I hate Clapton, kick, mm -hmm. but I always found him quite tasteful, even though his politics seemed a bit off. Eric, like, <laughs> Eric, I don't know what you're doing with Van Morrison on that whole front, but, <laughs> but. Uh, I did, yeah, yeah, I People like are, it. Huh? Uh, it leaves you ch scratching your chin once in a while, but I like like great guitarists in, in different like classical and jazz dudes and, and rock dudes. But if I watch them too much, I, I get a little like I get a sad about my lack of ability. That's yeah. why the YouTube sometimes people send me like, I know he's great. The seven year old player is, is playing circles around me. I don't know if I need to see that. It, I, it's like good for him. You know, like, I'm so glad that they that they can do that. But also I'm like, oh, I've been trying to do this for like 20 years. Yeah. yeah. And so, it's also kind of my job. So it's like, oh, here's another guy doing it way better than you. Look at that person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's great. And I'm like, eh. But I am always a little insecure about my playing. But, but then I, I, I there's a there's a, a lady named uh, Yvette Young. I don't know if you've seen her. Um, she yeah. plays in a band called Covet and she plays this mm. really, she's been on the show a few times. She's mm. a really amazing person. She's one of the coolest guitar players I've ever seen. Very unique. Uh, yeah. she, piano was her first instrument and she kind of plays mm. a guitar like a piano. It's really wow. Cool. Yeah. But she, she pointed out something cause a lot of people will watch her play and then they'll have that same feeling that you and I just described. They're like, well, I want to quit now. <laughs> and and she's like, it kind of makes me sad when people say that. That's not what I'm going for. She's like, yeah. I just want, I, she's like, I want people to be inspired to try stuff. And I'm yeah. like, I know they are not actually going to quit, but it's still a little bit like, right. no, don't quit. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that sometimes the sort of show off more guitarists, I think that is kind of, they're, they're demonstrating how much better they are than you. But sometimes, yeah. As opposed to like Ted Green, he 
he never wanted people to watch his hands. They to get obsessed. He wanted them to hear the music. And they were all just like, oh, my God, how are you playing all those crazy chords? Right. And I can kind of get that, too. You want uh, you want the music. But also, I take uh, I take some uh, comfort in uh, the, the songwriting is something that's just kind of unique and it doesn't require, uh, you know, concert right. piano chops or anything. And I've always admired, I've always, actually always admired players like uh, Neil Young, for instance, who's just not obviously a great technique, but, but uh, writes great songs and then just throws himself into it and finds some cool. And it's all, you know, it's all kind of vibe, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he yeah he's for it. the master of the one note solo. And I mean that in the best possible sense. I love oh yeah, the, te- the telegraph. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he'll he'll play that for you know twelve minutes and and enjoy it, and you sort of get caught up in yeah that's not that really great but man you're feeling it <laughs> he kind of takes you on a journey <laughs> yeah I love the the not great technique guys but then I I do like uh, like say if the great technique guys are are saying something musically that's probably sometimes your engves and stuff will get a little your Aldini Iolas a little note heavy yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. It, it feels like you're uh, somebody who talks a lot, but doesn't say anything. <gasps> Great analogy. Mm-hmm. Which could be me. That could Great. be me. <laughs> <laughs> As we talk on our, as we blather on, on our mics. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, th- that's interesting listening to you talk about that because I've, I've always noticed that you, you definitely are what I would consider a more chordal player. And mm. I think some of the stuff that you do is, more complicated than I think it first seems when you listen yeah, to it. That's yeah. that's my that's my take on it. Yeah, I try to. Uh, yeah, I always try to go for some interest and really kind of. Um, I'm a I'm a big Beatles guy, and mm-hmm. uh, I was you know once again like not great technique, but I know they're always we're going for a sound or something wherever that note or the right note and or uh, and I thought yeah that's it really you know just. Uh, well, yeah, just just go for the whatever sound that is, wherever it is. Like if it's a weird chord or something, then it's kind of. But I do uh, love playing chordally, and and my lead playing has suffered because of it. I never, yeah, I never really think in the lead. I sort of, you know, I, I uh, pretend to play lead sometimes, but try to leave that to professionals, right? <laughs> People who got that people who covered. yeah, really good at that. And, yeah, well, yeah, the like, Ingvase, uh, the aforementioned Ingvase. Well, our guy, uh, John Kaneski, who I did guitarings with and plays in all my side projects, he's just a phenomenal player. So it's nice to have him taking care of that a lot. Mm-hmm. That seems to be like a, kind of a thing over the years where many times in a band, there's just the guy, the shredder. He's like uh, appointed. And, you, yes. oh, and he drops out. Oh, we need a new guy. <laughs> like, uh, like the Black Crows. They'd always have a... A guitar player, lead player that was like, oh, yeah, because Rich is kind of, you know, he's playing rhythm over there, but it's a pointed, a pointed shredder. Yep. Yeah. I mean, and I feel like that in the early stages of a band that comes along kind of naturally, right? Like somebody just starts picking up the leads and somebody starts writing more of the songs and it's generally not the same person most of the time. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank God for that. (laughs) (laughs) Although there are those annoying people like, wait, you're good at everything? Oh, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. You sing? You play lead? And then it's usually a a power trio. Yes. Be like uh, Brian Setzer. I was like, wait, I'm going to sing, play all the groovy leads, and write all the songs. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to play a gut bucket uh, bass, and you're going to play on one drum. That's right. Um, <laughs> well, we're going to split up the uh, money. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah. That was that was funny when um, when uh, Blink One Eighty Two or mm-hmm. or when like or uh, Sublime, for instance, when you lose the lead guitar a singer a songwriter, but then the band goes on somehow. It's like, mm, yeah. no, <laughs> I don't think that's right. I think you could lose. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be mean to drummers and bassists, but. You know, I think those are a little more replaceable. I think I think whoever the primary songwriter is, I think Blink kind of gets away with it because they did split the duties a little bit more as far as the songwriting. Sure. Yeah, they would share. And, but and uh, sometimes when you lose that primary songwriter, it's like the whole vibe kind of 
shifts or gets well, of course. Out, you what know? else do you have i mean it's uh, if you had to go importance i would say songwriting one and then lead vokes too as mm-hmm. much as i love the guitar and all that stuff but uh unfortunately that's that's the stamp of uniqueness that is what everybody pays attention to too like yes god damn it i know we're always i mean the lead guitar is cool but i don't know like mick jagger's it's almost kind of old-fashioned now the yeah when uh, solos you know they sort of went out of fashion they're always my well they were always my favorite (laughs) part of the song like fast forward to the to the guitar break but yeah i don't think people i don't think people care i don't think people care about guitars I don't think people care about good music. Any, I, I'm a grumpy. I'm going grumpy old man oh, on you right man, now. Oh man, you're doing it. You're I'm doing there. it. My day. They <laughs> cared about it with things. <laughs> no, but come on. I mean, you listen to some music, and sometimes it's like aliens dropped in. I'm, I'm not even knocking it. I'm just like, um, I didn't even know what's making that sound. I don't know what that is. Yeah, that that's probably what I do. And the, oh, that's what you do. I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah, no, I get it though. But I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to evolve though. I, I came in the other night. I was playing some uh, some acoustic, which I don't do all that often, honestly. But I was playing mm-hmm. some acoustic, and I came in the house and I was talking to my wife, and I was like, "I'm never going to be able to write a song like Merle Haggard. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do it." And oh, she's I like, think, I think you know, you're she, well, she's like, well, you sound better. And she's like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nor should you. And he's not going to write a song like Blake. That's right. This is true. This is Blake true. Mob. I'm not going to be able to write it. <laughs> I assume your last name is Mob. That's yes, that is my. No, uh, it's it's, Wy- it's Wyland. But we'll, we'll go. Oh, OK. Mob. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mob is sounds better. Sounds That's more right. uh, yeah. like something of substance. There's Blake Tone Mob Highland. <laughs> Some people do just have me saved in their phone as Tone Mob because that's what all the socials <laughs> are and that's what all the everything is. So this is work. Is this your full-time job? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's coupled with a few other things, but it all stems from this. So. Yeah. Yeah. So just the, kind of this is the main hustle. Yeah. It's it's really fun. You know, yeah. Yeah. It's beats, really- beats working. What was your uh, uh, day job? I was, I was a diesel mechanic for about eight years and then I, I worked in the uh petroleum industry basically i worked at the place where all the trucks go to get the gas and bring it to the gas station both those jobs sound really dirty and not in a pornographic way but just <laughs> the diesel like mechanic some... job was really dirty the other one yeah. actually not so much because i was working with refined products so okay yeah yeah you weren't no really heavy there. crude or anything like <laughs> yeah. that so, but it uh this wow. is a lot more fun you got skills that's a that's a pretty skilled position. The decent uh, mechanic. I mean, you got to know what you're doing. It was a uh, it was an intense job, and I I thought I really liked it, but it turns out that my heart is in other places. As it turned, I'm kind of a more wow. creative type person, Dude, and having a boss. Off the cab, living the dream. Hashtag living the dream. I feel right like here. it. I feel like it. Damn, but now you're talking to KG. I know you, you got, you have to understand this is very exciting for me. <laughs> I do, but you have to understand that I'm with me all the, and I know just how mundane and boring I am. So it's like, so but of course true. I get it. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, t- I got the email and I told my wife, I'm like, I, th- I think I, you know, I think I'm going to talk to Kyle. She's like, R- no, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I got the email from his people. And I think it's real. <laughs> so, yeah, it looks it looks legit. Yeah, from from Hendrik. Yeah, eat music. Yes, yes. My German manager. Yeah. How did you get the hooked up with a German manager? Well, we uh, the Kyle Gas Band. Uh, we wanted to go to Europe, and John Kineski, our uh, manager, guitarist. I think that they reached out to them. I think we went over on one tour, and they saw us, and they. Uh, just kind of cold called us or John and then uh, took a meeting and we liked him and we thought, well, why not? This is, uh, they, they know what's going on over here and we like to play Europe. So it seemed like, all right. And then, uh, yeah, then he's been on the scene ever since. Nice. How long's that been? God, that's been probably five or six years, I think now. But like I said, it's, uh, it's always been, uh, it's kind of whatever. It started with the Kyle Gas Band, and then uh, we did uh, like a Kyle Gas Company called it. it was just a, an acoustic three man tour, 
And now uh, I'm thinking about going over there just kind of solo-ish with mm-hmm. this little backing band. And, you know, the economics are such that uh, you've got to really keep the overhead. I just, I just love playing. <laughs> I just love playing Europe. It's just so fun. And I like, I just feel like uh, I get a paid vacation and then you get to play some gigs on the way. So mm-hmm. usually, even if it's a break even, I, I enjoy it. Where and they're great of- fans over there. It's, uh, it, they really seem to still like the rock and, and uh, yeah. So it's, it's good. Where are some of your favorite Europe, Europe spots? Um, I like Germany and, Austria and uh, I love the UK. I, I know they're not Europe. Don't I don't <laughs> don't write me. I know you guys, but if you from our perspective and you look on a map and it's just it's part of the continent of Europe. Okay, it just yeah is. Uh, yeah. I don't go too south usually. Just that seems like we don't get the offers there. But uh, yeah, pretty much all around. You know, your Belgians and your uh, Denmarks and your you know all over. It's fun. I mean, there's all, and every country is a little different. I love Switzerland. It's kind of overpriced and they're kind of tough to get in with the merch, but uh, yeah, it's lovely. 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 So let's talk about the, if you want, let's talk about the early days a little bit. Back when ah, you guys were first getting started. Take me down. Take yeah. Me back. Like, do you remember the moment where you were like, hey, I think this is going to work? Uh, yeah, not, maybe not an exact moment, but definitely just, uh, I mean, even as early as, as coming up with a song and playing it with, for our friends at the theater. And it just seemed, this is kind of special. This is, you know, we're both skilled and it's funny and just kind of seemed like it was working. But I would say we had a gig, our first gig at Al's Bar. Uh, we just had one song and we played tribute and uh, David Cross uh, was there for some reason at this little <laughs> downtown bar and kind of discovered us really and, and get, you know, got us a show uh, in Hollywood, kind of a comedy cabaret show. And and then we were just kind of off and running. I mean, at that point, uh, it just, it was kind of a magic carpet ride. I definitely, there was timing involved with the, with the alternative comedy thing in the late nineties in LA and, and, uh, you know, it was just ripe and HBO was looking for stuff. And and we, uh, we had, we had kind of also had this kind of celebrity following too early, which, which helped in LA people right. sort of, it became, there were things, uh, in the clubs back then that was sort of, uh, just become kind of came the, the cool thing as it were like, uh, naked trucker, and uh, just other acts and things which sort of uh, just get a lot of press locally. But yeah, it just, uh, but I didn't, I had never been in a, anything like this. So it was all, but I know that people, yeah, started really liking it and just things were happening. It was, it was quite fun, especially uh, being in LA for so long with nothing happening. Right. <laughs> it's like, which, oh, well, this is great. Which tends to happen. Sometimes it works. It was yeah. just like, oh. But, you know, uh, one thing is just Jack is was just obviously a very uh, charismatic, talented dude. So there's no, kind of no doubt that something was coming for him, right. <laughs> I think. As much as you can in Hollywood, you know, you never know. But Yeah, that's got to be kind of an interesting thing. Was it weird? Because if in my perspective, at least, it seems like the band and Jack as a actor took off at the same time roughly well yeah but if you get in the weeds a little bit you can see i mean there was a there was initial break jack got it he got a lot of heat for his little role in uh bob roberts kind of was his first uh, mm-hmm. which is a tim robbins indie and he had a great couple scenes in there and it was like oh this guy's this guy's really intense and funny and then uh and then of course the big breakout was uh, high fidelity, right? Because then it was really that's you know sort of became Jack's comic persona, and of course, got to demonstrate the singing chops, mm-hmm. and it was just such a great um, you know coming out for that. And that what's that ninety seven, somewhere in that ballpark, yeah. 
but that was also because we were, like I said, blowing it up in the clubs. And then we got that HBO show was right. in 97 too. So, you know, Jack wasn't sort of a movie star yet, but yeah, it was, I guess that was kind of happening. So you had the band, but then, um, but then of course, School of Rock in 2002, but then that was sort of after we came out with our first album and yeah, you know, and that obviously that's when he exploded and, but even that though, you know, he really, he, uh, he worked hard and, and cultivated and, and, uh, just kept growing after that. You know, a lot of people, you know, it could have been a one hit wonder, but, uh, but Jack continued until the Jumanji tentpole franchise. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, uh, I, I think people don't appreciate how much work goes into, maintaining a career like that for as long as he has no you, yeah you don't uh i think yeah whatever's happening people just well that's just the way it is like that's but no you don't no. you don't get to that level without um and it's also the you never want to it's like i work so hard because well everybody wants to be a movie star a rock star so it's like i had to work so hard sometimes i i found like <laughs> lady gaga will get on this thing like i did wasn't sitting around on the couch or something like kind of like shaming us for not working hard enough like she did or something's like well okay girlfriend i'm you know glad for you but don't don't get him out of my butt for not working as hard as you did right and mm -hmm. and it is a com like there you have to work hard that's kind of a given you have to be able be out there and putting yourself in a position to be able to do whatever it is that you're trying to do but you can't ignore the fact that there's a certain amount of luck involved, you know? Yeah. It's there always, is. there's this, yeah, that's just, that's baked in. You can never really separate it. But also I would say like, you're never going to, you, you can't have a movie star complain about how much work they put in. Right. It's just right. like, it's complaining about oh, this, this, all this money I have is such a responsibility. But the reality is, a movie is hard. And if you have to carry a movie and you're away for three months and, it's grueling and it's pressure and you have to, you know, there's a lot of money at stake and you're the face of it. And, and, uh, it's just, uh, it's pretty intense. And then to continue that, you know, a lot of people have a, a movie or two that does well and then that's it. But no, it's, uh, it's quite a feat. Yeah. I, I, sometimes I catch myself in complaining mode and I'm like, Oh, this is so much work. This is such a thing to try to push this thing, do this thing. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and then I think yeah. back to just, you know, a few years ago. And I was like, well, when you were hanging upside down, covered in hydraulic oil in the excavator, <laughs> you would have killed to do have this be the hard thing, you know, like, oh, so I got to ha have that have to have attitude that. of gratitude. Yeah, man. As we say in the program. Yeah. Yes. You got to really think about it. I know it doesn't. It's. I think I was kind of lucky that I had many, many years of just really grinding it out, you know, trying to get acting work and not even, uh, you know, music. And, and just, I just really appreciate it when, it, when something good came along. Like, right. All right. And then try not to squander it. But it's impossible. You get lazy and then all of a sudden you find yeah. yourself on the couch like Lady Gaga warned. Get off that couch. <laughs> Get off the couch. But, uh, but it is, uh, it's, it's also like, well, what do you, people dream about? Well, I want to be rich and famous and successful. But why? What? So when you're there, what does that going to, you know, does the food taste better? And it really is, if you think about it, or I think about it, it's like, no, I'm allowed, I'm given the freedom to, to create and do things and not have to worry as much about, you know, the rent and this, that, but I still, it's just an opportunity to, to do the work you want to really. Mm -hmm. I think so that's, great. that's what it really boils down to, because I remember hearing, I think it was Dave Chappelle talk about when, <clears throat> when he walked away from his show back in the day and talking about like, he, he had a realization cause they were like, Oh, you're going to get this many million more dollars or whatever. And yeah. he, was, he was like eating at a, I hope I'm not putting words in his mouth. This is a very foggy memory. Yeah, Go ahead. Put words in his mouth. <laughs> but he, I remember him saying he was eating at a really nice restaurant and like mm. not too far away from him was like, like a literal, like multi-billionaire. And he's like, well, if I'm already eating in the same restaurant as that guy, 
how much more money do I really need if I don't want to do this anymore? You know? That's, yeah. If you still want to do it, that's one thing. But if you don't want to anymore and you don't have right. to. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah, it's thing. pretty easy to get caught up and, and you, you never know how much you're going to want. I mean, there's, you can never be too rich or too, too thin. It's just, <laughs> then there's that sort of, of the performer, the hole in the soul kind of phenomenon where it's right. never enough. I need more. I mean, I think I suffer from that. Like, do I really need more attention? Do I really have to read the comments in my Instagram? Do I really have to sort of worry about being relevant now at this stage? I mean, and yet I'm still sort of like, you know, it's kind of, um, it feels, it just kind of feels good probably to be in the game. I, I Everyone mean, I, wants to be vital. I think that when you're used to a certain amount of attention, it feels weird to not have it. And so that's very true. Good yeah. observation, Blake. It's all kind of like, yeah, whatever the norm is. Yeah. And when they uh, stop asking, that's when I'll mind. Yeah, it is. Right. I mean, it's true. I know that I, I get, I have a different kind of attention, but it's, it, as much as we were saying, I don't want to talk about guitar pedals anymore. The, the minute I stop getting Instagram messages about like various <laughs> pedals, I'm gonna be like, doesn't anybody care I anymore? Care about <laughs> <laughs> now, wait, are, do you make, do you make boutique pedals? Is that your deal? Do you make, no, I don't. I do work with it. I work with, I collect them and I work with a handful of companies to like help make them and p push them out into the world. So all right, well, let's talk about me some more then. So, yeah. you know, I'm thinking about going Dylan. I want to, I want to, I want to strap on the electric. I don't want to be gimmicky. You know, I'm kind of a straight ahead kind of. Mm -hmm. What do you, what would you uh, recommend for like a, a well, setup what, for me? I guess, what do you have already electric wise? Do you have anything? Oh, well, yeah, but uh, nothing I'm like married to. I'm actually playing this uh, hollow body Paul Anderson, which I really like right now. I like mm -hmm. kind of those, uh, yeah, uh, f hole kind of deals. Those yeah, yeah. I know they feed back and stuff, but they feel, but probably because they feel more like an acoustic. But I like, uh, you know, I like a different ones. I like a uh, Les Paul or I like a Tally. Mm -hmm. fun. But like I said, I like kind of the an f hole. But so I think if I were you, I would do something pretty. Pretty standard. So, uh, mm -hmm. do you, what kind of amp do you have right now? Or amps? I don't. You don't I have don't. one at all. No. Um, so, if you just want to go with whatever you can get at Guitar Center. It's hard to go wrong. I really like the Fender um, bass breakers that are out right now. They're relatively affordable. And they're not uh, for bass. They're not for bass. As, but it, they call them bass breakers. They call them bass breakers because of the blues huh. breaker, which was a, a it's a whole thing. Classic. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's kind of like a riff on the on the Marshall thing, but not exactly. They're relatively hmm. affordable. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of just like what's just available everywhere because I I'm the guy that's like, oh, I've got this uh, this guy in Portland that makes him in out of artisanal you know beard hairs and things. So not really. So you like the <laughs> Fender? Uh, you like the Fender amps? I like the Fender mm -hmm. amps. Supersonic 22 is a great super versatile Fender. Um, uh huh. Uh huh. And then I'm thinking with the go with your Paul Anderson thing here. And then like, I think a, one of the best straight ahead overdrive pedals that just seems to work for everything is the mad professor, sweet honey overdrive. Hmm. That's I think that you would, you would really like that one because of how you play acoustically. A mm -hmm. lot of your sound comes from your attack and mm -hmm. this pedal responds a lot to attack it will crunch more the harder you dig in and it will clean up right. in a way that's really natural. All right, let's, let's just send me one. I'll, I'll send it back if I don't like it. Okay. I got one. I'll send it to you. It's my old reliable. I'll send it to you. Dude, that would be fantastic. I need to, uh, yeah, we'll get you some. Uh, we'll get this figured we'll get out. A lot of, yeah, we'll get this figured out. I've yeah. got to go electric. Okay. Now, I do like effects, but, you know, you don't want to you don't want to get weird. I mean, what are sort of the basics? I do. I'm like overdrive, overdrive, distortion, fuzz. I don't know that you need distortion now are those or fuzz. Uh, yeah, aren't those in the same family? So they are. Those are all dirt boxes. Obviously, they make it mm -hmm. dirtier. Distortion's going to be, you know, think like more metal tones, saturated, re real lots of sustain, smoother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fuzz is the widest range because fuzz can be like 
ripping Velcro off, or it can be like a big muff that sounds more like smashing pumpkins type of thing. So, right. Um, I think you would I get, think I'm going, yeah, I, I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I just think, yeah, I think it's more kind of a, more kind of a seventies kind of uh crunchy kind of Bachman Turner overdrive. Yeah. Kind of, you a know, Marsh- I think, a Marshall-ish thingy. Is that Marshall-ish? Yeah. I don't even really know that much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you also, good... I don't want to get in the way. I don't want to step on uh, Combs. I mean, no, he's, uh, he's supposed to plays through a, uh, Mesa boogie. He's sponsored Ooh. by them. Yes. Love some mesas. I need to get some mesas in my life. Never yeah. Mind. I have plenty of stuff. <laughs> Stop trying to get all the stuff. Oh, you got to get all the stuff. Well, now I, you need it for me. I got to get we, me set up. Yeah, that's right. So you're in um, Portland. I am. I can just come up there and then visit you, you come up here. You come to the shred shed. People can't the see shred. This. Oh my God. Come on. The shred shed. The shred, I'm turning for the listeners. I'm to turning the, the camera so he can see the shred shed. That's just by far the best name. My heard today. <laughs> Who doesn't want to go to the shred shed? Yeah, it's just in my backyard. It's the shred shed, and of I course. come out here and make a bunch of racket, and then it's wonderful. Man, yeah, that a lot of people would just settle for man cave, but you, you bumped it up. <laughs> we're, we're going shred to eleven. Shed. We're going to eleven. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's what we should do. You should come up here, and we'll go through everything, and we'll we'll do we'll a find we'll, what do you a, like. uh, we'll do a we'll do a yeah we'll do a episode. Dude, now you don't do any video then. Uh, I do a tiny bit of YouTube like pedal demos and stuff, but that's not my main thing. But that's not your jam. It's not my jam. Well, and this is more pod. This is podcast. Yeah, yeah. This is all audio. I, I, I'm kind What's of selfish. Thinking behind. I'm kind of selfish. Yeah. So I don't I don't watch podcasts myself. Like there's a lot of people that put them out as videos, right? But I don't yes. really watch them. I listen to lots of them. You listen to lots of them. You listen. don't watch them. So yeah, how is it selfish for you not to tape them? Um, I just don't make things that I don't personally engage with. Uh, and I never you I never have put them out as video. So, but maybe that'll change. Maybe it'll change. Um, I, I and I say that I I did a podcast uh, with a friend recently, and we did ten episodes, and that was just a mo- that was a a bone of contention, or uh, so to speak, because you know should we put video out? I mean, we're just it's all stagnant. We're just talking like this, right? And no, no, and my my partner Kevin, oh no, no, everybody does it. You put them out on the YouTube. It's like, oh, all right, I guess so, but I. I sort of, I think I'm like you. I, I don't even really listen to podcasts, nor would I ever really watch them. But, mm-hmm. uh, but I think there's, uh, I, I really enjoy the audio only. I like, you know, radio, radio plays. Mm-hmm. You know, I like the audio only. Why does everything have to have a visual? So, I'm I mean, saying, I, there you go. All right. Well, I, I'm glad I got your approval. I, I just, yeah, I just like, I'm like, I don't. And, and additionally, when you're, when you're a channel my size, putting out videos that people don't watch the whole thing of as far as youtube goes yeah is, you don't get the, you don't get it, the it actually hurts your account and wow, so interesting very few people watch the entire hour plus long thing does that true for instagram too if they don't watch the whole thing it's does pretty it much happen? true for any algorithm driven social media platform because wow. yeah. i i only like to post on the grid so i'll just play just up to a minute mm-hmm. sometimes i wonder Maybe I should shorten that. Um, the minute's still pretty good. I think most people, especially, yeah. got to hold their attention for a minute. It's, it can be difficult. But I, but uh, I'm always, I'm way too obsessed with the numbers. I have to break free. Uh, but it's. But I'm just curious how it works. It's. Just, it's it can be that this is, and this is when you say, "Is this my full time gig?" I'm like, "Yeah," and it all spins off from this because inevitably I end up having conversations with guitar makers or pedal makers about this exact same thing that we're talking about right now. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's good. It's good because <clears throat> I think it's good for creators to think about this kind of stuff a little bit more because as much as we want to say, we just make it and put it out there and, and people will show up. That is true. But if you are participating in a platform that is algorithm driven, it's best to have some level of understanding of how that platform works. You know, agreed totally. Mm-hmm. Agreed totally. Yeah. Do you know uh, Marty Schwartz? Mm-hmm. 
uh, Marty. Yeah, he's a, he's a buddy of ours for many years, and we've often like, geez, this guy cracked the code. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, you know, shooting questions at him. Oh, what's the key? And, you know, there's all sorts of tricks and this and that, and, and it's also changing all the time. It's and, always changing. What was working last week may not work this week. Yeah. And, and I'm just very old, Blake. I can't <laughs> keep up with the new algorithms. I can barely keep up with it, and it's my job. It's How old are you? I'm 32. Mm-hmm. I knew you were 32. How you knew I, I was 32? You were, I was going to guess. Honestly, I, I just, you, uh, yeah, you seem 32. I'm, I'm sort of well along. You were just, you're coming out. You're, uh, yeah, you're getting into the adult phase. Yeah, I've, ugh. I guess. I don't know. I feel like <laughs> in some ways, I feel like I've been adulting for a lot longer than some other yeah, people of my age. That's for sure. Yeah. But, but I'm uh, okay with it. I, I look back to the kid days and I'm like, those were fun. But, you know, these days are fun or two in a lot. Of yeah. So, oh. You I'm know. Realizing. Um, on the same kind of line of like helping out other creators. If yeah. you could give young KG some advice. Oh, wow. That's what would one. you say? It's funny that I never think of that because it's impossible. It's yeah, <laughs> but, but you might, it's, it is impossible, but you might be talking yeah. to somebody right now. You might be talking to somebody like you. Somebody might be listening to you right now th- thinking, I wonder yeah. what he, what he would impart on a young himself. Yeah. Uh, stop thinking, start doing, mm-hmm. don't overthink it. Trust your instincts. Uh, put the work in. Mm-hmm. So many times, in my, I just wasn't really putting the work in. Um, uh, you know, you can't think your way out of a lot of stuff. Right. I really <laughs> found that. When someone said that, I was like, whoa, I spend a lot of time just trying to figure, fix things in my brain. It mm-hmm. doesn't really work that way. Yeah, take action. More rock, less talk. I think. There you go. That's I like my, it. Yeah, doing is important. You can strategize and strategize and plan, but if you never actually enact no. anything, you got to actualize. Yep, you got to execute. I know it's uh, it's a tough lesson. <laughs> Still <laughs> learning to this day. And then uh, you know, just uh, having a little, having some success, that can be a real trap too. It's like, ah, I don't have to do anything for you know. I, or can it I be have, like? Uh, can it be stifling creatively or it's like, oh, I just have to keep yes. doing this thing over and over again. Uh, it can be. Yeah. Sort of, you know, but, uh, you know, I think that's, uh, you can get out of that. Yeah. You can how, get out of that trap. How do you get out of it? Uh, I think you got to go back to the egg and, uh, just play for yourself and just, you know, try to turn yourself on. And it always comes from, um, I think all journeys are inward and, you know, you just got to go inside and stop trying to figure out what, what other people want and stuff. <laughs> I think you just got to go, go with your thing. I had to restrain myself really hard and I'm kind of slipping if I'm making an inward singing joke right there, but I did it. No, nope, <laughs> that's all right. You just did. I did it anyway. All journeys are inward singing. Uh, they are. I'm sorry. I apologize to the audience and to my mother. Cause no. I'm sure she's disappointed in me. <laughs> she's proud. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is good stuff. Um, no. Thank you for hanging out with me for so long. I know that like we had some technical difficulties in the beginning. Well, but, I blame it all on you. Zoom. Uh, well, I don't know what this Google or what you're doing with your whatever that other thing is. Whatever. Well, it it's it's useful for a lot of people. Some people just have their phone. And so mm. it's it's, mm-hmm. it's a good mm-hmm. it's good for those that are in that situation or this situation. So Yes. Um I never know what well, people are doing, so I'm trying to accommodate as best I can. I just want to tell people out there what you missed not being able to watch this video of us. <laughs> You've missed out. If there's any archival footage, try to get your hands on it. Should I put my shirt back on now? No. Nope. Uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> no. Okay. No, he didn't. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm sorry. Sorry to everyone. Well, Kyle, thank you very much. Uh, I think if you have thank you. a few minutes, we'll break for Patreon and wrap this main part no, well, That's up. where you make the big dollars? Uh, I make enough to pay my electrical bill. So that's, we have to do it. All right. All right. Good night, everybody. (laughs) The free listeners. 
Stay tuned for the really good stuff that you got to pay for. That's right. Mm. All right, everybody. For Kyle, this is Blake. And as always, folks, good luck and good tones. All right, folks. There you have it. There you have it. Can you believe that happened? I can't hardly believe it. I know it was a slightly shorter episode, and I was a little bit, uh, well, not to pull back the curtain too much, but I was a bit out of sorts. We had some technical problems. Kyle only had so much time, and I really, really wanted to do this podcast. So once I got that all sorted out, we actually got connected. It was rolling fine, but admittedly, I was a little bit flustered at first because, you know, when you're working through technical things, it gets really frustrating, especially when it's somebody you really, really want to talk to. But we did it, and uh, here it is. There is a little bit more. There's a tiny bit more over on Patreon, if that is your thing, along with a sneak peek of another episode that's coming up. So you're going to get some bonus content this week and every week. So for five bucks a month, you can support the show, help keep this thing going, keep it chugging along, and get extra content delivered to your ears every week. So there you have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Please share this with a friend. If there's somebody you know that's just a big Tenacious D fan or a big fan of Kyle in general, please share this with them. Maybe they're not so into guitar gear. Maybe they want to just hear a conversation between some, you know, now buddies. So yeah, share it around. Share with anybody you think might like this. Okay. Talk to you next week, people. Bye-bye. One last thing before we totally sign off here, I just want to remind you that if you do any shopping at Stringjoy, that's Stringjoy Guitar Strings made in Nashville, that will help me out as well. As I've said for years, I'm heavily involved in that company, and I really do think they're making the best products on the market. So if you would like to try custom strings, go to ToneMob.com Stringjoy and check them out today. I seriously, seriously, seriously love what the team down there is doing. I help them out with all kinds of things, and by you supporting them, you are also supporting me as well. And hey, you need some strings, so why not get some custom strings just for your guitar and playing style? Again, the link for that is tonemob.com stringjoy, and that will take you right to their website and you can do all your shopping through there, and that will help everyone involved out. So thank you very much. Talk to you next time. We are brought to you by the wonderful folks at Gun Street Wiring Shop. Yes, Gun Street Wiring Shop. I've talked about them before. I used to say based out of Bend, Oregon, but guess what? Sean moved to my neck of the woods. Sean's in Portland. Sean is awesome and has helped me with a bunch of stuff lately. And if you have wiring needs for your guitar, he can help you too. If you want to get weird with it, he can get weird. If you just need to spruce things up a little bit, there's your guy. He takes all the guesswork out of doing your guitar wiring, and he makes it simple, and his customer service is top-notch, and I can't say enough good things about Gunstory as a company. I really respect Sean and what he's all about, and the product is top-notch. I've got three different guitars that now have Gunstory harnesses in them, and I could not be happier. So go to GunStreetWiringShop.com and check them out.